Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melanie and welcome to the event coach training for Wildlife Safari 2022. Uh, I am an education coordinator with the Detroit Zoological Society. I'm super excited to step into this role as the new event supervisor for this event. Uh, back in elementary school, I too was in Science Olympiad and participated in this event, which I can say certainly helped build my interest in wildlife and wild places as a child and played a part in where I chose to take my career path in informal science education. Um, I do first want to say thank you to all of you as coaches for sharing your time and your guidance uh, with your teams of students. I hope that you'll enjoy learning along with them and having so we will go ahead and get started. Wildlife Safari 22 is all about birds. This event rotates through four different domains and this year's focus is on birds. Students are tested on the knowledge of Michigan birds and their habitats through the use of a field guide. And this year's field guide is the Birds of Michigan Field Guide by Santa Kila. This is the third edition of the book. So if we have any veteran coaches for this event out there, today. Um, it used to be the second edition. Make sure that you are now using the third edition. There are a few changes in wording and some of the, the identifications. Um, there are six new bird species that are included in this guide, so make sure that you are using this edition. All right, the rules for this event um, are really good to go over. We're going to be kind of going through them a little more in depth today. You can find the rules on the website event, event page. If you go to macombso.org um, and click elementary, you'll see on the sidebar there's 2022 events and rules. Navigate down to Wildlife Safari and you'll see the event web page. Um, and you can download the current rules on that page and it'll come up with this PDF. Um, it lists um, some information on the competition the format of the test, the scoring, the resources, the information that you can find um, to look up if you haven't already gotten the, the field guide books for your students, um, as well as the list of bird sounds that are included in the test for this year. We will go over this in detail a little bit more today, um, but it is always a good idea to reference back to this multiple times um, prior to the tournament. And for the rules, if you do have questions, if a question comes up, I would suggest making a mental note of it today. I might answer it as we go through these slides um, at the training this afternoon here. If uh, you if I keep going and you still have that question, you can feel free to type it in the chat and we will come back to it at the end when we open up for questions um, and Again, all questions are on clarification. So if you have a question on the scope, if you have a question on how the, the format is, if it's not something that's listed in that uh, rule page, you can check the frequently asked questions page at the bottom of the Wildlife Safari event page to see if that question might already be listed. The questions that are on there currently are um, updated and we will continue to update those as more questions come in through the season here. You can send questions through a question form. On the sidebar of the uh, McCombs page is FAQs. Um, you'll click that and you'll find questions about specific events and it will lead you into a Google form where you can enter in your information for the wildlife safari event, answer or put in your question. It will go to John, our tournament director, and myself. We will come up with an answer if it's applicable to clarifying the rules and uh, notify you, and it will also be posted for everyone else to see as well. All right, so the tournament test format. All questions will be based on information found in the Birds of Michigan Field Guide. So the scope is anything within this field guide book. The exception is the bird calls. So that list of bird calls or bird species that was on that rule page, there are 32 species that students should know and become familiar with. 
These calls will be played aloud for teams once they are set at their first station. Bird calls will play consecutively. The call will be about 15 seconds or so, followed by about five seconds of silence so students can answer and bubble in their answer before the next call plays. Play Bird call number one. A similar, somewhat of an example. A brief pause. That sounded like a morning dove. <laughs> Absolutely, you got it right, John. Uh, and so it will continue right into the next calls. These calls will not be replayed at any point, so they've got their one chance to listen closely, know it, circle their answer, and wait for the next call to move on. The, the bird calls will comprise of about 10 to 15 percent of the test in total. The second part, the main part of the tournament test are uh, questions that are at stations. They are station based, so teams will have about one minute at each station to answer four to five questions and then they will rotate stations based on timed call outs. Students won't be able to return to any station and they can't advance before being instructed. There will be about 18 to 20 of these stations and the questions that are included they are multiple choice or true and false they will vary in difficulty and be a range of anywhere between one to three points based on the difficulty of the question the exception is a tiebreaker question or questions um, these will be write in answers and students will be using zip grade forms for this event Stations might include photographs and maybe biofacts, which might be feathers, skulls, nests, etc. Students won't be allowed to touch any part of the biofact during the competition um, due to these uh, items being fragile, and they won't need to manipulate the items at all to be able to answer the questions. Scientific names are included in this field guide, so they are within the scope. However, they may be only about 5 to 10 percent of the test. As for scoring, I mentioned points um, are going to be worth one and three points based on the difficulty of the question. For that tie those tiebreaker questions that are right in answers, exact spelling isn't a requirement but they do need to be legible so that we can score them appropriately. What should your students bring? They are responsible for bringing pencils. Um, John mentioned to me that for the zip grade forms, they don't necessarily need to be number two pencils, but probably a good tip would be to bring, I know, an extra pencil or two, just in case something happens to the first one. Students are able to bring up to two field guides per team. So with this event, the main focus is on this Birds of Michigan field guide. I would suggest this be one of the field guides for your team um, because this is where the scope is, but they can also be student created field guides. Students are able to write in the book, tab the book, however they please. Um, they can also create their own. Um, the only um, you know, rule or exception to the student created field guide is that they have to be contained. There cannot be any loose pages or loose items that come out. Um, it has to be you know, bound and secured in some way. What should my students know? So a big thing is identification by photo. This field guide has some awesome pictures in it, and that is going to be one of the main components for identification using this field guide. Uh, familiarity with the field guide. So if your students aren't ones that know all of them right off the top of their head, they need to know how to use this field guide. It's um, sectioned by colors, which is super useful for beginners, for students. I still love using this type of field guide for birds and, and lots of other wildlife. Um, so use, use the sections in the beginning 
to teach your students how to use that field guide. Um, the intro sections have a lot of great information about basics, um, about birding, and give a breakdown of those identification pages so they know how to move through their field guide and how to read for what the questions are asking for. Identification by sounds. So the list that was on the included on the rule page lists 32 species of birds. These audio files were shared to teams um, with head coaches back on December 29th. Um, they match those on allaboutbirds.com, or I'm sorry, allaboutbirds.org. Um, and these will be what will be pulled from for the tournament. So practice with these. Um, if you don't have these, reach out to your head coaches ASAP um, or reach out to John and we will get those to you. Interesting facts. Um, all the information that are on these different ID pages is any of this information and anything that's included in the scope of the competition here. So things such as range maps, anatomy, features of certain birds, their diets, nesting, migration, certain behaviors, compares, how they compare to other species, and bird basics are all, all different things that are included on these ID pages and may be included in the test. Some tips as you work with your students. Um, become familiar with the guide. I've said that quite a lot already, but become familiar with the guide in the best way for each student. Everybody learns differently. This event is one that is very memorization heavy. You need to be able to recall species and be able to navigate through this guide. Um, work with your students. Find the best way they help that they can absorb the information. Um, utilize each other. You're not their teacher, but you are their coach. So involve them in the learning, have them share with each other and help practice recalling and memorizing the different birds. Make it fun. Definitely going to enjoy it better. Maybe maybe birds aren't everybody's favorite animal to learn about, but the more you get engaged with them, the more fun you make it, the more they will learn the material. Use your resources and opportunities. So this is one event that does have um, outside workshops that are available to attend. Uh, it is, there are workshops at uh, Shadbush Nature Center, Stony Creek Metro Park Nature Center, Lake St. Clair Metro, Metro Park Nature Center. And um, they are might provide some information that's not necessarily within the scope of the competition. I'm not the ones running them. Um, these other organizations are, but uh, all in all, they're still going to provide a really great learning opportunity to um, get familiar with the material in the field guide. Uh, other resources. Use your other resources. Remember that this is the scope of the the competition, but that doesn't mean that you can't use uh, pictures and audio clips from other websites or other guides that are helpful to start helping your students recognize the birds. And if you're able to utilize your local trails or parks or nature centers, um, they have a variety of material that can help engage students in the different um, birding activities. They can practice using their guides. A lot of nature centers have um, taxidermy mounts of birds. Um, see what birds you can find just outside your neighborhood. One of the practice sessions, wherever you're at, take a, take a walk outside or something and see what you can find. And then uh, another tip is once you get closer to competition time, um, practice with those zip grade forms. Um, they are, the examples are available on the Science Olympiad website. And depending on how familiar your students are with the Scantron format, um, practice, you know, going through some test questions with them and bubbling in those answers uh, so that they are more familiar with it come tournament time. I mentioned some resources. Again, they might, prov they will provide information that are outside the scope of this certain field guide and the competition, but they're still really useful tools to engage students um, in learning the material and practicing their identification skills. So some examples of this are all about birds, um, where you can search the different birds 
and they've also got calls, lots of pictures. Um, let's see what else. Autobahn is another great one. Um, and eBird, both of these have apps that um, you can download on phones or iPads um, and are really useful as guides as well. And we will go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, again, you can type them in the chat or um, if you can, we can uh, unmute and have people ask them. If they are, uh, again, based on clarification of the tournament, the rules or the scope, um, and they aren't already answered on the website, we will come up with um, a note for them and share them on the website from today's session. And I just want to say thank you again and best of luck to all of your teams. Melanie, Melanie, you did an amazing, did amazing job. Oh, good. We have a question. Awesome. Jessica, go ahead. My question is um, the 32 bird calls that they need to identify. Are those also the only um, species that they need to have the other facts on? No. So the, that list of 32 species are the species that calls were chosen for that students should know. That is the list that we will select from to include calls. Um, a bird that is not on that list will not have a call in that portion of the test, but that does not mean that there won't be questions on that bird. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head there. Melanie, about how many birds do you think are in that field guide? It's over 100, isn't it? There are 118. Yes, so okay. we are not asking your students to know all 118 species calls or songs. Um, that is a lot. That's a great way to bird is by recognizing their sounds. Um, but no, we have limited that to only 32 that they should know the calls for. And then again, that 10 to 15 percent of the test will be calls. So for the section that, that you were speaking on, the interesting facts, the diet, the nest, that's that based off of all the birds that are listed in the field. Uh, OK. Good Melanie, question. there are questions in the chat. Can you see those or shall I? Yes, read them I here? can. Yeah, I will go ahead and go through them. Um, let's see. Francie says, will students have a multiple choice for bird calls. Yes, those questions will also be multiple choice. Uh, let's see, Matthew, we have the red version of the field guide. Does that work? Um, I will say this new edition, this third edition is the one that we're going off of to build questions. Again, slight differences in some wording. Um, Third edition includes six new species, updated photographs and range maps, expanded information, and more. So, so Melanie, I'm going to be I'm going to be more blunt. I'm going to yeah. say the answer is no, right. because and this is my reason why I'm going to say no, even though you could argue for yes, because that book is about fifteen dollars, and these event coaches and students are going to spend so much time preparing for this. I would hate for them to bring in a substandard resource. So get yourself the third edition. OK, and then let's see, Lisa, do students start at different stations? So have to know how to start at the right place on the zip grade. Then they go in order through the stations. Yes, so students, because of the number of teams, say there's 12 teams that come in a tournament session, they will be um, placed at a certain station number. That is where they will start. And then they will rotate through those stations in order. So yes, they do need to know where their station starts, what question number it starts at, and to navigate down onto that on the zip grade form. I'd like to comment. Oftentimes we'll, we will identify stations with letters just to make sure there's not confusion for your students as to what, what number they're starting on because we, you want them to start on the correct question number. Question number. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can show the websites from the previous slide again. 
Um, and this will be posted. John will post this up on the event page website for your reference as well. Again, these websites are not ones to go off of specifically for the questions. They're just a really good. They're examples of really good tools to help use um, in identification practice. Uh, let's see any tips on how to use the field guides as it has 300 pages. Yes, <laughs> it is a big field guide, um, but I would suggest looking at that introduction information and it gives you a good breakdown of how to um, learn how to use the guide. Let's see. Can I make a comment, Melanie? Sure. So as an event coach, your job is to organize the time that you have with your students. And so thinking that you're going to do all 118 species at one time is an overwhelming thought. But if every week you decide, hey, we're going to take on six or 10 or something like that of these species, you know, break it down and make it more bite sized for your students. Excellent. Uh, Kim says the new edition says it has six new species, but it doesn't mention what the new species are. Any ideas? I'm going to leave that up to you um, and your students if you'd like to find out what those new species are that uh, Stan has included in this edition. And Francie, did you say that a copy of the zip grade can be printed from the website? If not, where can I get one? Yes, on um, the Macomb Science Olympiad website, there is, I will see if I can find it. I'm there is a There is an area where it explains the zip grade forms and has some links to the examples, right, John? There's two places, and so I, I, there's a clarification, even since I spoke with you, Melanie, uh, last about this. Uh, there's a generic area on our website where you can find the generic forms, and I noticed, uh, be, I realized that I updated this in just in the last few weeks. Um, I've updated the link that is specifically on the Wildlife Safari page to be the form which looks exactly like what you're going to find on the wildlife safari uh, exam because we produce custom forms now which have teams pre-printed on them um, and so you will see that exact custom form if you follow the link that's already on the wildlife safari event page perfect i see it. yep on the page it says this event uses a custom zip grade answer sheet and it's got a link to an example. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. Practice tournament format as the final event. Uh, the simple answer to that question is yes. 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 I think yes. Will the practice format, practice tournaments be in the same format? Yes. I think that gets us through all the chat questions. I don't think I missed any there. If anybody else has any other clarification questions? So like every other uh, event that uses a zip grade form, one of the things that Melanie will be producing for us is what's called a category index. So after all the practice tournaments are over uh, and every every team will be invited to one practice tournament. Uh, after the practice tournaments are over, we will be publishing um, the document uh, that's called a category index, and you'll be able to match the answers uh, on your zip grade form uh, that you'll get from your head coach. Uh, we'll, we'll be distributing that generally through the head coach. Utica teams usually hang on to them directly. All, all the other all the other ones will go through head coaches. Uh, you'll be able to uh, match the answers your students provided with that category index. And what that allows you to do is to uh, learn what areas categorically your students are good at and what they need more work in. So if they're really good at identifying species, um, you, you'll, you'll be able to see that, but maybe they weren't as good in the, you know, fun facts about, you know, the, you know, so maybe some of the more obscure information or things like that, or scientific names, just as examples. Nice. Thanks, John. Um, Jill asks, all students answer the bird calls together, correct? Yes, 
they that is how the tournament will start. So the first X amount of questions will be based on those bird calls. And then will they be numbered number one until whatever on the zip grade? Yes. Because the bird calls yeah. will be first in the test, yes. they will start at question number one, right? And then, okay. uh, and while the students, this is a good question actually, because this is a this is a nuance that doesn't happen at other events. So, uh, questions I'm going to make up a number. Questions one through ten are going to be uh, all about bird calls, um, and your students, everyone will be instructed where to what questions to answer. They will see the written, they'll hear it. They'll see the written questions. Uh, what you know? What is bird call number one? And they'll see the list of multiple choice questions. And so there'll be a direct one-to-one -one match for the question number and the zip grade form. And then after that, they'll they'll be starting at a station, and they, it will be important for them to start at the question number of the station that they're at. Yes. And then where do we sign up for workshops again? So you can find that information on um, the main homepage of Macomb Science Olympiad, the elementary page. And there is a link to the workshops offered for this season um, and uh, it should pull up a PDF and you can call those um, nature centers directly to sign up for these workshops. Registration is required for those workshops. Uh, another advertisement in regards to workshops uh, the generosity because of the generosity of General Motors this year, your participation at those workshops will be paid by uh, a General Motors grant that we've received. And uh, except for uh, in the cases of the Metro parks where there's an entrance fee to the park that's not included, but um, the, the fees that you would typically pay to those nature centers will be paid for. You're welcome. Excellent. That's a nice opportunity. Um, Kim asked, are tiebreaker questions at each station or are they given at the end when tiebreaker teams are identified? So the tiebreaker questions will be included at some point at within one of the stations. They won't be, I would not say that they will be spread out. Um, they're, they're only at one station. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's imagine for a moment it's a 20 station event. Um, station number 20 will be the tiebreaker questions, something like that. And so if your students start at station 19, they'll find that the second question they're answering, the second station they go to, they're already answering the tiebreaker questions. But if they start at station one, they won't see it till the end, right? So every team will experience it slightly differently. Absolutely. And then are students allowed or encouraged to attend more than one workshop or are they the same? So I can tell you that they are not the same um, just because there are three different um, locations or that have these events. Um, John, uh, I don't know if you might have more insight. I, if I they haven't attended them. One. I haven't attended them all. I can tell you that there's some coordination that happens between um, the met two metro parks. However, each each uh, leader, I'm trying to think of what the you know what the right title of the person yep, in each that instructor, is. each interpreter. instructor. Is their own is has their own style and uh, so it'll be a unique experience with each of them. So there we do have some details about how the workshops are different written on that workshop flyer. Uh, we've you know we've tried to give some detail. So some of the workshops are a little more in depth than others. Um, and so you should read that material. That's the most that we've received. If you want to ask more questions when you call to register, you can ask the nature the specific nature centers for more questions if you have them all right and then jessica asked i see you have your hand up for a question um hi i've been coaching this event several years if not two decades now um when it was critters and stuff anyway the more workshops you go to the better because those workshops are very informative they set up great stations and you actually get to see live mounts, which are hard to come about, come by and you get to see the skulls. It's all it is is exposure to the children. And I, I just would highly recommend going to as many as you can. That's just been my experience. So that's all I wanted to say. 
Thanks. I think that was Francie. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you have the opportunity to be able to go to these, I, I would recommend it. Again, not they will may cover stuff that's not within the scope. Um, so make sure that you are definitely focusing on your field guide, these field guides. Um, but yeah, it's a good, good opportunity to learn and practice the material. Um, I will mention that, uh, as I mentioned, we might use biofax at some of the stations. Um, again, all within the scope of the field guide. So if you and your students do not have an opportunity to be able to go um, to one of these workshops, um, you are not uh, missing anything if there are biofacts included, if that makes sense. So the questions, if they do have a biofact that accompanies them, whether it be a skull or a feather, it pertains to information that is in the field guide still. We have a couple more comments in the chat, and I see there's a couple people who still have their hand raised. Let's see. Da -da. Uh, Jessica, did you have another question? No, sorry, I just don't know how to unraise my hand. <laughs> no problem. Uh, let's see. Kim also said we enjoyed chickadee chowder at Kensington and the winter birding fun there was great and I would recommend. Yep, um, I'm familiar with Kensington Metro Park Nature Center and that program. Um, it's a it's a fun opportunity to go to. Uh, will the images uh, be exactly will the images exactly match the book? Hmm. That's a good question. I was That's wondering that myself. I'm going to guess the answer is no. Yeah, I I would say no. I would say no. I think that would that would limit limit yeah. the competition. Comp and we don't we don't we don't have publishing rights for the photographs in that book. Uh, in addition, so that would be one barrier. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb. This is a great event for me to say that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Jessica is not going to give any trick questions, right? There isn't going to be any pictures out there where you say, oh my gosh, if only I'd seen it before, I could have known it was a particular, you know, hawk or something else, right? She's going to give very obvious photographs of these these birds that, you know, are very enticing and, and get the kids interested in looking. Right, exactly. I'm taking a look at our reference material from past uh, past events, and it does not look like they are from the field guide. So that is a no. We still have one hand raised. Uh, yep, Francie, do you have another question? No, I thought my hand went down. I was <laughs> making a comment, so. <laughs> I don't All even right. see my little thingy there, so <laughs> anyway. Oh, okay, sorry about that. No problem. There is one comment that someone made in the thing that said we enjoyed the chickadee chow down at Kensington. Yep. And the yeah, winter birding fun was there there was great and I would recommend it. So all the experience from the from the, the experienced coaches is really appreciated. Absolutely. Any opportunity to to go out and practice your skills. You know, even if it's just more so of a, a fun trip out, um, get those kids engaged, have fun, um, get them excited about about birds. Uh, let's see, is the top winner still able to win a summer safari week at the zoo? Great question, and the answer is yes. And John, correct me if I'm wrong. Each group, each team from each of the divisions. We'll win yeah, I, so, so I just submitted our application to the zoo, I think yesterday for formally for this opportunity. So thank you for confirming that in fact that we will receive that award. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, and, definitely, and so definitely typically, something to, to strive for. Yeah, it's it's we every year we love getting uh, four vouchers for the summer safari and they're given uh, to the each of the teams that place in the top of the K-5 and the K-6 divisions. 
Awesome. I'm glad to hear you love the Boys Love Safari Weeks. All right, I think that is all of our questions here in the chat. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you.